Hey everyone, this is uh, Nitha Ramachandra from the NR Hour Sports Show. This is episode 1003. Happy Monday, everyone. Uh, this is uh, we're, we're joined by a really special guest. Uh, please tune in. His, his name is Andy Chavez. He's a former MLB Mets outfielder. Man, in my opinion, he was one of the best outfielders in the game back in the day. Um, he is known for that ama- unbelievable catch he made against the St. Louis Cardinals in Game 7 of the 2006 NLCS. Man, that was an amazing catch, which we'll get to and. He not only he played for the Mets, he played for a, a lot of different teams: Royals, Washington uh, Nationals, Expos, Phillies, Mariners, Rangers, Orioles. So he's been he got a lot of experience in the major leagues. And fans, please tune in. We are live on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor, on all the podcast platforms. So you guys can ask questions to Andy today on on the Spreaker app. So Andy, I just want to say thank you for joining the show today. Um, happy belated Easter. Um, how are you and your family doing today? Thank you, thank you. Happy belated Easter. And, um, you know, thank you for the opportunity. Um, you know, I'm happy to, to enjoy you. And, uh, well, I hope everything uh, going well. It's, uh, you know, for a very excited uh, conversation for the fans, and I hope they enjoy it. Yeah, thank you. And I, um, so most of my, I got a lot of, um, some of my friends are Met fans, so they're really excited for this one <laughs> when I, when I told them, when I told them that you were coming on the show and, um, for you, um, let's start off with that game, uh, against the St. Louis Cardinals in 06 game seven, obviously the most pressured game in all playoffs. And, uh, obviously, uh, both teams want to win that game and it goes down to the wire. So for you going through that, going to that moment where, uh, Scott Rowland hit that ball all the way to the uh, to the fans, and you were there making the unbelievable catch. Take us to that moment. Tell our fans about that. Oh, uh, I mean, when we got to that game, uh, I knew anything could happen because uh, both teams put the best effort to be in that situation, and uh, I already knew. I, I, I said to myself, like, uh, whoever wins this game. He's gonna win the the World Series, mm-hmm. and and that's what happened. And in that moment when Scott Rowling uh, stepped up the play, you know we had the advanced report uh, where I'm not supposed to be, and you know always um, I, I I follow mm-hmm. I follow, but in that case, um, I was thinking you know uh, Edmund was running up first, and. I know Scott Rodney is he's a power hitter. Yeah. And uh and I was thinking the situation was one out and it was tie game, tie, tie ball game. So I'm like uh, let me get a few steps back. So that 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 way if the ball is in the gap, I'll be able to charge it hard and take it in quickly, send same way to the to the line. And I'm like, okay, um, I'm set. I, I, I just took like a five step back. And I think that was it for that ball because uh, I wasn't having on my plan the ball hit over my head. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that was happening. Um, and I think that, that put me in, in pretty good shape to, to run to the wall mm-hmm. and, and trying to time it the right time to, to catch. Even that I don't have the that much time to calculate and stuff like that, I had to run full speed to the wall. By the time I'm getting to a warning track, I knew like uh, the ball is kind of beating me. It's uh, normally I, I like to be to the to the wall yeah. first than the ball, so I didn't have that time. Hmm. And I like okay, I have to do something about it and. And my way over there, and I always joke like uh, I, I took my basketball skills like in you. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, okay, I have to time at the right time. So the fence was right there too. And if you see the replay, uh, I had to jump f- far from the fence and direction to the fence. So. <laughs> Uh, at the same time, uh, pull my glove up and uh, and and wait for it because I'm not able to see nothing because yeah. everything happening on the other side to the fence. 
And that, like I said, that was one of the best catches in my opinion. Um, if you want to look out, look at like uh, other uh, like catches, like Willie Mays's catch or Dwayne Wise's catch during Mark Burley's perfect game, I put your catch right up there uh, because that oh, was like I, said, like I said, game seven, the most pressure game in my obviously in, in all sports. Um, but for you, what what did uh, Ali Perez uh, say to you after when you guys went back to the uh, the dugout after the uh, after the inning was over? What what did Ali Perez say to you? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, 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 I think he he didn't know how to react because yeah. everything happened so fast, and we just get out of the inning with that play. The well, we was you know uh, check hands and yeah. and the dog out and stuff like that. He stand, uh, I stay, I sit next to him, and um, he just shake my hand. He said, "Thank you, thank you," and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah," you know, we we still there. You you pull us in this spot, so you get us chance to win the game, and uh, everything was happy and 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 fun in that time. Wow! Yeah, so we are live with former MLB Mets outfielder Andy Chavez. We already have a fan que- fan question for you. One of our fans want to know what what was it like representing representing your country, Venezuela, th- throughout your major league career? They want to know. Oh wow! Uh, it's very special for me. You know, as a kid. I always dreamed to be a MLB player. And as a kid, you never know it's going to be possible to happen or not. But when I was signing as a free agent uh, and I had the opportunity to wear a uniform, uh, my first uniform was the Mets mm-hmm. when I was a rookie. So uh, uh, that was like like, like my family uh, team. And, and the beginning of my career because I played for five years for for the Mets in the manually system, and and that's a you know like a special feeling with and and, and baseball for me, and uh and and to be representing my country uh is like a very good challenge that I, I like it mm-hmm. and I put everything that I that I could to 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 earn it. And, and to be proud uh, to be part and in, in the major league uh, representing my country because I knew it, it was a lot of good players representing my country and I want to be one of them. Yeah. And uh, for you, speaking of uh, minor leagues, obviously you learned a lot of the minors and you had a great minor league career before getting the call up. But uh, wh- how hard was it for you to – you got you got moved a couple of times before – uh, going up to the majors and uh, how hard was that for you just moving to different teams and just learning uh, different cultures especially being from a different country oh yeah yeah uh, not easy not easy because the the first the when, when you got here uh, to U.S. my, my first uh, town if you can call it it was Port St. Lucie Florida yeah and you well, know the complex is here for the Mets that was my first town, and uh, unlike you know everything different, the culture, the, the city, and um, the and you know it's the new language that uh, I just was zero English, mm-hmm. and and you know it, it was uh, uh, very tough because uh, like when I start, um, they they just explain everything on the field and what we're gonna do and we just have to ask uh, you know uh, a teammate that can understand what they're saying so so we can know you know and and it's not like a lot of uh, Latin coaches by that time they, they they can help us so I'm like okay um, trying to do my best and and you know it was a lot of joke. Because uh, I, uh, I remember uh, that I had like bad stomach. So they sent me to the training room oh. and they gave me like a pet of small or something <laughs> like that. And, and I feel better. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they, okay, go hit the field again. And when I get in there, you know, one of the coaches asked me, how are you feeling? And I'm like, oh, we're taking in field, and I start running to center field, and everybody's calling me, hey, no, 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 come here, come here. <laughs> how do you feel? We're not wow. taking in field right now, so I'm like, oh, okay, no, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Wow. 
Yeah, so speaking of, we have another fan question. They have an interesting question. They want to know about your language barrier. And for you, obviously, starting your career as a young player, it was tough. It must have been tough for you uh, uh, trying to learn English. But they, one of our fans want to know, how long did it take you to learn English and uh, just, just to apply uh, when you were in the majors? I mean, I don't think I stopped learning. I'm <laughs> still learning. I don't feel very comfortable yet, you know, uh, to express myself. Sometimes I got stuck. And when I got stuck, I got nervous and I, I started like losing English, Spanish, everything. So uh, it's, not, it's not easy. And I'm still, you know, uh, practicing. And, and it's, it's something that, you know, I want to get better and better. But uh, uh, at the same time, I can defend myself and ask for food too, oh. you know? <laughs> and <laughs> that's very important in this country. And, um, but uh, yeah, um, I'm still learning. I'm still uh, trying to get more deep on the language and uh, trying to do my best to have communication. Hmm. Yeah, so this is, I found something interesting. When you were with the Nationals, um, they gave you a nickname called Enning, Enning Andy. Uh, where, uh, where, did that, where, where did that come from? <laughs> well, I th well, I remember that news uh, comes in the newspaper when I was in, uh, with the Mets. Yeah. And, and uh, I just uh, hit the, uh, how do you call it? Um, when I hit the ball, to to leave them on the field, how you call the World oh, Cup oh, hit? Yeah. I hit a World Cup double, mm -hmm. and uh, and we won that day. And the next day on the um, in the newspaper was uh, saying that the Andy Indy oh. or something like that. Uh, how do you say it? Um, it, the it says ending ending Andy Andy Andy. Andy. <laughs> yeah, and I like all right. It's similar <laughs> like my name, so. <laughs> they 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 think they can match that, so <laughs> that's kind of funny for me. <laughs> yeah, so you were always known for your speed throughout your career. You had, you had a lot of speed when you got on the base, and um, but you had the you had the opportunity to when you got to the Mets, you had the opportunity to work with another great Willie Randolph to improve your hitting. So what was that like learning from the, another great and especially a Willie Randolph, a known commodity in the in the majors. I mean, for me, it, it was uh, very easy to play for Willie because uh, he let me play. He let me be myself. And, uh, and, and like, like I said, you're playing comfortable to, to play for Willie. And I remember my first year when I got there in 2006 um, in the spring training. And, you know, we started building the, the relationship. So I remember exactly what he told me in the end of spring training when he called me to the office, he, he just told me like, uh, hey, Andy, I'm not going to ask you only one thing. Just bring your energy to my team. And I'm like, oh, okay, so how do I do that? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I don't know how to do that. So I think uh, it, it was meaning like uh, to, to play the game and, and you know, uh, be contagious to, to my teammates the way I play baseball. And... And I'm like, okay, I thought you're gonna tell me something like uh, I want you to bong a lot or, or get a lot of walks or, you know, uh, work on the count, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. He didn't say nothing about it. He just told me that and I'm like, okay, I think I can do that. And, you know, uh, that's the first year that I had a very good year. I said often, see, hit it. Mm. Uh, I hit 300 for the first time in my career and, and was playing with him. Wow. Yeah, so um, one of our fan, another another fan question for you. They want to know, uh, during your uh, interviews, either before games or after games, uh, did you have a, a, um, a translator with you or did you try and speak in English while doing like post-game interviews or pre-game interviews? Well, in the beginning of my career, uh, we don't have the translate people yeah. with us. So I remember my first interview when I got called out with Kansas City Royals. Uh, I, I had barely, barely English. So I, I knew when I felt it when, when the camera was on, the light was on, I forgot. 
my English, my Spanish. I was so nervous. I'm like, oh my God, I, I don't know. I need help. But at uh, that time, we don't use that. And by the time that I got the, to the match, I was, you know, uh, a little bit more comfortable. And a lot of report guys uh, laughed with me because I'm like, sometimes they ask me questions that I'm like, uh, can we speak English? <laughs> because I didn't, I didn't get the question. So uh, they're trying to find a way to I can understand because that's one thing that I learned when when I was uh, trying to do interviews. That if you don't ask, if you don't understand the question, just say I don't understand because you don't want to say something that's not related to the question. Hmm. Yeah. So who were some of the like some of the outfielders that you looked up to throughout your career, or who are, who are the some uh, that you played with or played against that you looked up to? I mean, uh, always as a young, uh, 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 I was, I love to follow Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah. And I like, you know, uh, trying to, to imitate him, like, you know, his swing, uh, his fielding. And by my surprise, when I was with the Expos, Mm -hmm. Um, he, uh, we trying to, uh, we had to, to face each other. It was with Cincinnati and I'm like, um, you know, he was in the same field with me. I want to say hi, hi to him so bad to meet mm -hmm. him, but I was kind of shy to do it because, you know, he was the big dog. I'm, I'm, I was a rookie yeah. and I don't want to lose, you know, that, you know, fresh. So I'm like, okay, watching him play and enjoying it. And I remember that he hit the ball center field hmm. and, and I caught it. I jumped to the fence <laughs> and I caught it. And he, he just looked at me and he didn't say nothing. And I'm like, okay, I had to bat, take a bat wow. that, that inning and I hit it out center field. I hit a homer. And when I come in into the field, he just screamed at me like, hey, <laughs> hit the ball on the ground. You made me look bad. Wow. And I'm like, okay, I started laughing. So that was the first time he, he talked to me and, you know, joking with me. And I have, you know, I feel good because he, he was talking to me. And and the later in my career, when I get to Seattle, he got signed mm -hmm. later in the spring training to, uh, in Seattle in wow. 2009. And I'm like, wow, very happy. When he saw me, he just say hi to me, very kind. And he treated me well during the season. And I got something that I'm never going to forget for sure. There's like a, a Jackie Robinson day. Mm -hmm. um, I was, you know, Ichiro was leading off. I was hitting second and Ken Griffey Jr. was third. And it was three lefty on the top of the lineup. That's a and, uh, and I hit it out and I hit it back to back with Ken Griffey Jr. that day. Wow. That's yeah, I, I I hit it out to tie and he put us on on the top of the score. Hey, that's a, that's another special <laughs> moment in your career, man. That's, yeah, that's amazing when you get to play with Etro uh, and Ken Griffey Jr. Three lefties in a row. That that's amazing, especially mm -hmm. on Jackie Robinson Day. That's a true special mm -hmm. moment. And uh, what, yeah. what what was it like just learning from Ken Griffey Jr. and also uh, Etro? <clears throat> oh, the way they 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 you know treat themselves. Uh, to prepare to the game, and uh, Ichiro was like almost a whole day stretching, uh, working out, and stuff like that. So uh, I learned a lot from him, and and he always uh, like uh, he got his own routine, and he didn't change. He keep that way, and and I think that's why he was successful. He was very different discipline when when and the stuff they doing. Wow. Um, we have another fan question for you. They want to know what was it like battling against the Yankees during the Subway series? And uh, what was it like? They want to know what was it like playing with Derek Jeter? I mean, playing against Derek Jeter. Um, that's that's very excited for me because uh, when I'm trying to to sign pro baseball, uh, I'm never gonna forget uh, when they had an academy in Venezuela. That I went to, to, they can check me out. If I can stay with them, they they just say that I can, I can not be a Yankee because I wasn't uh, six foot. 
Mm. So I'm like, okay, I know I'm a little, I'm not a tall guy. They always looking for giant people. And I'm like, okay, I, that always came in my mind. And every time that I face them, I'm like, you know what? We're small guy, we can do damage to them. And, mm. and when I always face the Yankees, it's like a special for me. Yeah. And um, not, not like us, it's something almost personal, but I think it's more emotional. Mm. And I'm like, you know, uh, I have very good days with, with the Yankees. And uh, and to play against Derek Jeter, it, it's a show, you know. It, it's very excited because he's, he's a competitive. He's, uh, you know, one of the best in at the game. And, and you can learn a lot from him. And especially when he talks to you mm -hmm. and know uh, and appreciate what you do for baseball. And I'm like, one time I hit a double. I chase and he was in the shortstop and he get close to me and he say, where, where are you from? I'm from Venezuela. And he say, oh, Venezolana, he starts speaking uh, Spanish to me. And I'm like looking at him like, whoa, I'm not expecting this, you know? Then I'm like, hey, todos los días, juega duro, todos mm. los días. And then, then he just telling me like, play hard every day, mm. every day, every day. So I'm like, yeah. That's that's the way I like it. So uh, and it's and it's cool when uh, a player like that recognized. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, we're we're a Yankee fans, so I'm I might have to message the Yankees. <laughs> How come you guys pass up on Andy Chavez? We had a chance to get Andy Chavez. Um, who cares about who cares about height, man? There's look at there's, in this game now in this generation, you have uh, uh, younger um, short outfielders now, and I mean. I can't believe the Yankees passed up on you, man. That, that's uh, we, we had the opportunity to get you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, that, that's part of baseball, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah, so we, we also had one of your other former teammates, Cliff Floyd, on the show last year, and um, it was an, an honor talking to him. And for you, what was it like playing, playing with Cliff Floyd, learning from him, uh, another great outfielder in the game? Uh, and what, what was it like playing with him in New York? Oh man, uh, it, it's fun. It's fun to be around. He's a very nice person. And like I said, he can be a big dog, but he's still humble and talk to the young guys. Uh, he treated me well. And one thing that I enjoy when I well, when I, play, I was playing with him is like, uh, I don't want to miss any of that because uh, that's a guy that I've seen hit the ball hard land drive uh, he can hit it out like a bullet mm -hmm. and, and and that's very fun for me to watch because uh you know i play with carlos delgado i play yeah. with bertrand <laughs> they, those guys got power but yeah. they hit the blown ball this guy just rocket mm -hmm. so it remind me when i face uh a guy sheffield too mm -hmm. yeah that guy hit the ball like a bullet and Especially, uh, it was a Che, and I remember uh, was a man on first, and the first baseman was tagging up the runner, and and he just hit a bullet to first base, mm -hmm. and I I can see it like in slow motion that the ball just passed over his head, and wow. then the first baseman react, mm -hmm. and he that guy start jumping up in his arm because he knew what play. Yeah, that 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 ball was so fast that he can't react. It. So uh, I, I enjoy to watch him hit because uh, I know something can happen. You know, something yeah. that I know is not gonna happen again. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So uh, we have another fan question for you. One of our fans want to know. Um, obviously, you had the opportunity to play in the NL East and the AL East uh, with Baltimore, and uh, they want to know: Would you say both divisions are the toughest division to play in? Well, uh, I think it just depends uh, what what uh, division you are, because uh, when I played with Seattle, so it was something like uh, you know not that intense. And I'm not saying not competitive, but I, I think the fans it, it wasn't that uh, into the game of in, in that area. But um, when I played in Baltimore, uh, Texas. It, it, it was a competition down, down there. 
So uh, I think the East is, is very competitive and they, 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 every team, you know, can do something. Well, yeah, so uh, tell our fans some of your best mo- – obviously, uh, the two m- moments was uh, with Seattle and uh, New York, but tell, tell our fans, outside of those two moments, what, what would you say your other moments were throughout your career? What do you mean other moments? Like uh, best moments throughout your career. Like, oh, yeah. the best moments? I think one of the best moments for me was uh, to make it to a World Series with Texas. Yeah. And also I had a good year after two years uh, not playing baseball because mm-hmm. of my injury, my knee injury. And uh, uh, to play every day uh, for Texas and make it all the way to a World Series, uh, that was a very special moment for me. Uh, also, the Mets, when I, in 2006, when I made that catch, uh, that's the first time ever I make it to the playoff. And to play, to be part of, of that roster and play, uh, it, it was uh, a dream come true. Yeah, so speaking of the Texas Rangers, obviously you went to the World Series and played against the St. Louis Cardinals that year. And uh, what was it like playing? Obviously, you played against the Cardinals when you were at the Mets, but what was it like playing against Alba Pujols and that, that tough Cardinals team during that World Series uh, run? Oh, man. Uh, and the World Series, I was like, uh, I think the uh, Cardinal took away two of ring for me. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it wasn't like very comfortable feeling. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, uh, they take uh, the ring two times in a row away from me and, and I don't have very um, kindness uh, reminded with them yeah. <laughs> because of that. But um, like I said, they, they have very good teams and I, and I knew uh, because Javier was there, he, he, he's amazing, you know, behind the play and he know how to work each feature there. Uh, to pull the the other team offense like very complicated, and um and, and we we know that it's a challenge, but uh at the same time it's uh, the same game they can make mistakes and stuff like that, and and we gotta play hard. Yeah. Um, one of our fans want to know who was the toughest pitcher you had to face throughout your career. Everyone, <laughs> everyone, <laughs> not an easy feature in the majors. But if you want me to name one, I, uh, I believe that was John Small. Oh, Ooh. wow. Well, yeah. uh, well, speaking of uh, what, what the, it, obviously everybody knows about John Smalls, but what was, what was it like being, what was it like facing him though? Like what, what, the, what did he bring as a pitcher? Uh, especially, uh, especially to a hitter. Whenever you guys, whenever you face him, he brings the heat too, or he can mix it up too with his pitches. Yeah, because my experience, speaking about his spear, is not fun to face him. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, he he can throw hard. He can use the slider. He and the pitches that I hate from him that was the split, and you know I get away a couple times with that split. You know, looking good, but. Uh, it's not because I don't want to swing. It's just I, I don't figure out where to swing. So I'm like, oh, he, he's good. He's good. And, and I didn't have the, I, don't, I wasn't that lucky to, to get a hit with, uh, against him. I hit the ball a couple of times, but I right at him. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, he's the only pitcher. Uh, it was very tough for me because wow. he can bring a lot, of, a lot of stuff and, you know, secure for 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 his team, and and he knew what he was doing. Yeah, so for you, obviously, you played in a lot, uh, a lot of great cities, but especially when it comes to New York, how special special was it for you just to play in New York, the atmosphere, especially in front of those fans and Shea Stadium, now City Field, but you played in Shea Stadium, and then you got the app, whoever hits a home run, the apple goes off. Uh, how special was that for you just to be with the, being in New York? I mean, I compare that like uh, when when you're an actor and, and you're in Hollywood, yeah. that was New York for me. You know, the most famous city on the world, especially in my country. And I'm like, uh, you know, it's, it's very great to, to be there and, and, and being in Manhattan and 
those big buildings. Yeah, it's very fun and and you know I enjoy a lot to to be around New York. Yeah, so uh, some most people forget about players uh, throughout their careers, and I I still haven't forgot forgotten about this player. So tell our fans about Melvin Mora as a player. Oh. This guy I, I never forget because he used to kill, he's, he used to be a Yankee killer. But uh, for you, uh, <laughs> what was it like uh, being with Melvin Melvin Mora throughout throughout his career? Um, uh, he's like my older brother mm-hmm. because uh, we I had the opportunity to play with him yeah. many times in, in my country, Venezuela, but in, in the same team uh, called Navigantes de Magallanes. Uh, I grew up, you know, watching him play and and to be with him like almost uh, every year. Uh, I, I learned a lot from them, from him and Edgardo Alfonso was another uh, players that they play in my country and the same team. And Melvin, like like I said, my older brother, and we, we was pretty close. He he just treated me like you know, John brother, and and he helped me a lot in my career. Well, uh, we have another fan question. They want to know uh, what music did you listen to uh, before a game? Well, music, I like salsa. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy salsa. I, I think that's a happy. Uh, music and and uh, that gave me my rhythm for the game. Hey, speaking of dances, uh, you and your wife are stars on Instagram. I see you, you guys, <laughs> you, guys you guys bring videos through Instagram, and I always be I'm, I'm, what's that? What's that like <laughs> just to entertain the fans on Instagram? You and your wife. <laughs> I mean, um, I was gonna. Uh, if I tell you honestly, I was kind of shy. But uh, you know, uh, my my wife, you just give me that energy and <laughs> and you know that that confidence. Like, uh, okay, we can try it and see what's going on because I I, I didn't see like a uh, you know a lot of baseball players doing it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm not sure about it. So I'm like, but uh, I think the the fans they love it. They they appreciate that I'm doing something like that to to have this day or. Or making laugh and and I like okay I think um, we get accepted by by you know the audience and they asking me to continue to do videos and I'm like okay when I have the chance I I I, I do it so I, and now I'm enjoying you know every time we have uh, to do a video uh, I'm enjoying a lot and especially you know it's it's a family thing yeah and. Um, and 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 that's where uh, you know the priority for me that I'm having quality time with my family and, and we enjoy it. Hey, we keep it going, keep it going. We love it, we love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys have TikTok, right? Yeah, we have TikTok. <laughs> yeah, because uh, because my work right now we we're not making it right now, but uh, uh it will come soon. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, in the later uh, stages of your career, you got the opportunity to play for the Mexican Baseball League and also Venezuelan Baseball League. So take us to that moment, going back home and playing for the Mexican League and Venezuela uh, League. Well, I had the opportunity to go <clears throat> to Mexico. Mm-hmm. I think it was in 2017 yeah. that I went there to play for Pericos de Puebla. It was a very nice experience, and uh, and also we make it all the way to the final, oh, wow. to the the Serie del Rey, oh. and I'm like, uh, we have a pretty good team. We enjoy a lot, and in that city, uh, Puebla reminds me of Colorado Rocky. It's very high city. Every time that I was running, I was like looking for air, <laughs> and uh, and. But uh, it was a, a pretty city there too, uh, very good people. Mm-hmm. And, and it, it was a good experience. I, I never thought I'm gonna be able to go there or I wanna go there because I'm kind of like not sure. But uh, I'm glad to de- that I did that and, and it was fun. And when I play in Venezuela, well, I try to play every year in my country. So just because uh, I know the fans support me a lot in my country and I just want to take uh like playing there it's like I'm saying I appreciate your support 
and and that's why I'm here. So I want you to watch me play. I, I try to go every city of my country. So I had the opportunity to play in each stadium and uh, and and you know have quality time with my fans down there too. Yeah. Uh, so we got some actually speaking. Of, um, we got some fans that are tuning in right now who speak Spanish too. So. Um, I'm going to give you the floor here right now. Would you like to say anything to your fans back home in Spanish here right now? And in Spanish, well, uh, like a appreciate or something. Mm -hmm. No, no, uh, muy agradecido, de verdad, con la fanaticada, eh, especialmente en Nueva York, que este, sé que hay muchos latinos y que siempre están pendientes del equipo, de los medios, de los jugadores y que apoyan de una u otra forma eh, lo que es el béisbol y eso de verdad para mí eh, me llena bastante porque hay muchos latinos que saben de pelota, el, el fanático de Nueva York sabe de pelota, por eso eh, yo siempre he dicho que el pelotero nunca va a poder engañar a un fanático de Nueva York porque él tiene que fajarse y si no se faja lo, los fanáticos se van a dar cuenta y es algo que este, siempre va a estar ahí. Así que eh, mi mejor consejo para los peloteros de, de, la, de, de los Mets de Nueva York, que siempre jueguen al 100% y siempre den lo mejor de ustedes, que lo, los mismos fanáticos saben que uno es humano, puede tener un día malo y todo eso, pero ellos saben el talento que tiene uno para estar en ese equipo y lo que puede dar. Hmm. Yeah, I got it. I got it. So, um, that's, that's basically, that's, thank you, right, to your fans. Yeah, and and appreciate like uh, like the the way the the fans support in in New York and um they they support the players they support the team and and it's uh like it's a lot of Latin fans over there and uh, and I say too like uh you never gonna uh fool the Mets fans because uh they know the game they know how you're supposed to play the game and they know about baseball. Oh. So I, I say to my, my best advice for, for the player, uh, for the math players, play hard every day and, and do your best because uh, uh, Mets fans, they know we're human, we have bad days and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But in the day of the day, they know uh, what's the skill we have and what you, uh, the players can do for the team. So. The best thing is play it hard every day. Well, well said there. And um, you had the opportunity to play with the Somerset Patriots, the Yankees minor league team at some point throughout your career. And what, what was that like for you, the, playing for Somerset Patriots? Well, that, that was pretty cool, too. That was close to my home. And, and, and that's the year that I decided to play for the last time uh, in the U.S. So I can go to my country and retire. And, and we, we, we are pretty good, very interesting uh, year down there too. I enjoy it a lot. Wow. Yeah, so after your career, you had the opportunity to be a uh, coach. You were named, in 2019, you were named the Brooklyn Cyclones coach. Um, so so being, at, being able to play the game you love and after being a coach for the game you love, then what was it like uh, coaching these young players in the minor league, seeing these young uh, talent uh, growing, getting their opportunities, trying to get to the where you were at before. So what was that like being a coach? Well, it's uh, like, uh, it's totally different because uh, like the first difference that I, that I felt was like, uh, as a player, you just worry about yourself, what you have to do to play the game right and stuff like that. But as a coach, <clears throat> you have to worry about everybody. <laughs> so everybody has to be on time, everybody to be in the right place. And it, 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 that was the first difference that I, that I felt when, when I was a coach. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I had the, the experience when I was a um, couple of last years in, in the majors, when I, when I was a veteran player and, and they called up a uh, John outfielder or something like that. <laughs> and they just like, Andy, it's yours, you know, like teach him. <laughs> <laughs> so I, ha I have like uh, that kind of the relationship with the young players and, and start, you know, talk to them and, and explain a lot of stuff. <laughs> so I knew I can, you know, 
do that job as a coach. And uh, and now, well, I'm doing it well, you know. I think the best way to do it is to build a, a relationship with the with the kids and and you know let them know that they can trust you what 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 we're doing. And I'm like, uh, I, I think that's uh, the best way to teach the guys uh, when you learn the confidence and stuff like that. They, they're gonna listen to you. They're gonna appreciate, and they're gonna you know uh, do the best for you too. Wow. Yeah, so we have another fan question for you. Uh, they have an interesting question. So they want to know, whenever you're on base and when you try to steal uh, from the pitcher, they want to know, do you try and do you often try to steal early throughout your career or do you wait till the count is three and two uh, until until the count is three and two? Just, uh, no, it just depends on uh, uh, the situation. But most of the time, uh, if you have, um, it's close game, and or we behind like early in the game. I try to be on second, you know, as soon as possible. So I go, I jump, trying to jump uh, early on the count, so I can I, I can give the the chance to the hitter to to bring me in. But uh, like I said, it just depends the situation when when to run, when not, and especially when um when I was late on on the game, tie game, uh. Uh, most of the time, I let the the manager take that decision if they they let me run or not. Hmm. Well, yeah. So now, obviously, you coach with the Mets, the minor league system, and 2020, you were named as a bench coach there uh, with the Mets. And <clears throat> what's it like working with your former team that you played with now? And um, obviously, 2020 was a tough year for everyone with the COVID situation and not knowing where everybody was going to be. But for you, what's it like being with the Mets, the team that you were playing with before? Oh, like I said, it's like a family for me, and uh, I'm very proud to to be part of and uh, to continue uh, to be uh, doing something for baseball, <clears throat> and especially with the Mets, they you know give me the opportunity to be in pro ball from the beginning of my career, and I like you know enjoy it a lot, and mm-hmm. and they I tell you what they have very good prospects down yeah. here, and to know those kids before they make it to the majors is, is special too, because uh, I, I able to to tell, uh, oh, we got a pretty good player here, we got a pretty good player there, and 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 I'll keep watching it from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of uh, prospects, uh, which prospects should the Mets fans be looking out for for the next coming years for this team? Um. Yeah. We got several prospects over here but you know our number one is uh, everybody knows already Francisco Alvarez he's amazing uh he's a war uh, hard worker and I think that attitude is gonna play a long time on, on the majors uh we have Ronnie Mauricio too uh, he's very good we have Betty uh, uh we have uh no, it's a third baseman. I forgot his name right now, but uh, he also a very good player. He's uh, I think he's in Double A right now. And Evientos, that's his last name. Uh, and a uh, single leg, we we have pretty good players too. We have one guy. I think he's uh uh Asian, mm-hmm. but, um, uh. His last name is John. We call it Waya, Waya John, and uh, he's, he's he's pretty good too. Uh, we have uh, Alex Ramirez and Low A. He he he's a very he got very good skills, and 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 we got many more. But yeah, to, well, to name it all, I know. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah that yeah that's some pretty good prospects right there. And um, I love, for me, when it comes to baseball, like I said, I'm a Yankee fan too, but I keep it, I keep close eye on other prospects. And it's, it's, it's cool to see these young talent um, try to work, work hard every day, trying to get to their goals and um, seeing them grow every, every time and seeing their success and their growth in the minors, uh, improving the number. It's, it's really cool to see as a, a former, as a former, former ball player like you. So. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I want to take you back back in the day throughout your career. Um, this guy who 
his name is Eli Fish, Fishman. He works for the Yankees. And um, you, you got interviewed by him. I think if, if you remember him, he was a kid and he interviewed you. So what, what's it like seeing these kids, young kids, get, getting into being reporters and being interviewers to, uh, to interview these players? Well, uh, you, you asking me about if we prepare then to no, do no, um, interview and stuff? No, no, um, what, what's it like to see young kids uh, get to uh, get, be like sports journalists in, at a young age, uh, starting off at a young age as, as reporters? Oh, well, uh, I had a few already that, yeah. uh, that interviewed me. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it, it's, it's fun too because they, they, the one that I, that I personally saw, uh, they're very professional. They, they're very serious about it. And, and like, they know what, what they're doing there. And I'm like, wow, that, that's pretty cool because uh, I always see that, like John skill, like for baseball, basketball, stuff yeah. like that. But uh, for report, I'm like, I, I thought that you had to learn on the university, you know? But I, I say, young age, uh, and, and it's, uh, you know, moving like that in front of the camera, the way they're speaking, I'm like, whoa, that, that, that's amazing. I enjoy it too. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one of our fans want to know, uh, what's your favorite NFL team and, and uh, NBA team? Well, uh, NFL, I don't follow too much football, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I'm for sure watching the, the Super Bowl. Yeah. That, that's, that's what I, I like to watch. And for basketball, um, I have a few. I, I, like, I like, you know, the Lakers, uh, I'm a LeBron fan too. And I like to watch Brooklyn. Mm. They have pretty good players, yeah. Miami and, and Phoenix. You watching the playoffs so far? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Every time I can, I watch the games, yeah. Yeah, it's so far so good. A lot of entertaining games already. But for you, uh, what are your thoughts on this MLB season so far? We're obviously like 10 games in, and the Mets are off to a strong start, 6-2. and two. Even with DeGrom out, you, got, you still got Max Scherzer. Uh, Chris Bassett, you guys got from the A's. Um, the offense is clicking right now. Lindor having a bounce back year from last year. So what, what do you like about this mess scene this year and with Buck Showalter now as a manager? <clears throat> I, I know, I know uh, they, they're going to have a very interesting year because uh, I play for Showalter too, and, and he's a guy like let's play. They give you confidence, and, and you, you're ready to roll. And I think uh, if the team stay healthy, they, they're gonna do a lot of damage this year. And and I think that's the biggest uh, team to get against uh, Mets, mm -hmm. the injury. If it, they they had a, like a solid team, you know, uh, far from injuries, they, they they're gonna do very good year. Yeah. So what what are your thoughts on the Yankees here so far? Obviously, they're inconsistent right now. They're five and five. They just lost two out of the three. Two out of the three of the Orioles. Well, I didn't have the opportunity to watch uh, Yankees yet, mm. but uh, yeah, on Instagram I saw the hard light and stuff like that because I follow a couple Venezuelan players yeah. that they and, and the Yankees. So I'm like, well, uh, they, they look pretty good too. Uh, like I said, East Coast, uh, yeah. it's a, it's a very tough competition. Yeah, so uh, which outfield, which outfielder do you like to watch now in the game? Which outfield? Uh, let me see. Um, from other teams, I, I I didn't see very uh, like very different players. But uh, if I had, uh, if I had to, I have to say some somebody. Uh, I, I like Ronald Acuna. Uh, mm -hmm. He's a very talented player. Yeah. So defensive, offensive, and an excited player. So I like I like him. Yeah. So before we get to the last two things, what was it, what's it like seeing Albert Pujols back in the Cardinals uniform? <clears throat> I'm so happy. I, I you know I'm very happy for him because. Uh, he deserved it. He deserved it, and, and he, I, I, I believe he had, you know, he deserved the chance at least to to make it uh, and see if he can make it to seven home home uh, homers. Yeah. And 
And uh, like I said, he's still producing, not like, you know, in the past, but he's still, you know, put some numbers in there. So uh, I'm glad for him. And, you know, he's going to be a future Hall of Fame. And, and I'm glad to still watch him play. He, uh, his home runs this year has been uh, crazy. Mom and home runs so far this year for Pujols. It's, it's, it's uh, crazy. Yeah, so he, uh, yeah. He's I'm hoping he gets 700 here this year, and it would be a great story, a great moment for Cardinals fans too. And, um, oh uh, yeah, yeah. So for you, uh, what do you consider being a manager down the line, if you're interested in being a, a major league manager? Uh, uh, it's, it's a lot of stuff. So, yeah, but uh, I, I mean, uh, why not? I'm not close. I'm not close that door, and then. And I, I'm learning right now in the process and and here on the manually system and I'm being advanced in a lot. So and the other side of the game and it, and it's cool. I, I would love to. <laughs> yeah, you you. In my opinion, you can make a great manager one day too. In my opinion, because uh, baseball, thank you. <laughs> yeah, baseball. Actually, baseball is trending that way. Uh, going younger with like for the Yankees, Aaron Boone. Uh, they, and then a lot of teams are going for first-year managers, and I feel like you can fit that bill at some point down the line. No, uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So the last two things here, um, our team uh, is part of this foundation. It's called the Hugh Jackson Foundation. Um, we're trying to help them prevent uh, human trafficking, making sure the community stays safe, the kids stay safe, and um, it's still horrible out there what we're seeing with human trafficking. So we got We're trying to stop it, and so we'll send you the foundation. So you can go check it out. All right. Okay. And the last thing here, uh, would you like to say anything to all the nurses, doctors, and all the essential workers right now? To the doctors about it? Uh, well, the, first of all, I appreciate what they're doing. And, and you know, the, we without doctor, we nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, to be health is, is priority. Because without help, we, we can do nothing. Yeah. So we, I, I'm, I'm very, you know, appreciate what they do. And, you know, the God bless them. So we, they can still saving and getting a healthy a lot of people. Yeah, well said there. And there it is. That wraps up episode 1003 <laughs> with former MLB Mets outfielder Andy Chavez. Man, uh, what a great career. Uh, obviously, a great center fielder, great outfielder, obviously known for that amazing catch against the St. Louis Cardinals in 06 in uh, Game 7 of the NLCS. Uh, we will never forget that. And obviously, his other moment was with the Mariners playing with Ken Griffey Jr. and Itro. And, uh, man, uh, thank you again for coming on the show. And thank you to our fans for tuning in and asking questions also to Andy. And uh, like I said, we would love to have you back on the show at some point down the line so you can meet the full team. Uh, but keep up the great work, man, as a coach. Um, and keep keep it going with those videos. We love it. Uh, but uh, thank, <laughs> but uh, thank you again, man. And uh, this is truly an honor and a great show. And uh, stay safe. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, I hope the, uh, you guys enjoy it. And, well, to the next time. Yeah, thank you. All right.